Uh, yep. UNC takes care of business against Michigan. Armando Baycott, you mentioned, had a great game. 26 points, 11 for 15. It seems like UNC has finally figured out that when Baycott gets touches, good things happen because they really weren't getting the ball that much earlier in the year. Coach, what did you see in this? A, a little bit more than they normally have been giving him the ball, Megan. I, I, I tell you, I, I hate, you know, being critical of, of other coaches. And, you know, it's not always the coaches. But uh, I think they have to give him the ball more. You know, I think he's way more than just a um, set of screen and roll to the rim and, and you know, get stuff around the rim uh, through either you know, garbage offensive rebound points uh, or rolling to the rim. I think he's a terrific passer. Uh, I know, obviously, he's going up against Hunter Dickinson, who's, you know, really, really mammoth in there. But I think he can draw fouls. I think he can score on anybody in the country. And when those guys are playing off closeouts, particularly R.J. Davis and Caleb Love, I think they're way more difficult to guard than when they're just pounding the ball up top. Um, Armando Baycott needs the ball even more, I think. I'm with you 100% on that one, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. To me, with that team, it hasn't worked going the other way, right? Like where the guards dominate the ball. And I know part of it was Baycott's fault earlier this season. When I was watching him in Portland, he wasn't getting deep post position. So I think it was a combination, but but if he does what he needs to do, there's very few players that can stop him. Yeah. And again, he and Hunter is a great matchup. Those dudes played AAU ball together. Yep. Yeah, I remember seeing him a few years ago, and they were terrific together. Um, so I was really looking forward to this matchup, and, and I knew Baycott would be ready. I, this was perfect. The timing for all this was ideal for Carolina because – they get that big win against Ohio State, and it was one of those that, that I think brought some emotion to them, right? Pete Nance hits that shot to force overtime. They win it. It's it's an emotional kind of flip the switch type game a little bit. You start to feel good about yourself, and now you go in where Baycott is motivated. Mm -hmm. He's hungry to play against Hunter and show not only is he, he one of the best big men in the country, but, yeah, this is the dude who, who I played with back in AU ball, I'm going to show him. And and I thought, again, they set the tone with Baycott and the guards can kind of play off him. 100%. I mean, I, I just – I have so much respect for how strong and, and how agile Baycott is. I mean, I just – I think he could do more. I think they could get him the ball. I don't want to say every time down the floor. And I hear what you're saying, that sometimes he doesn't battle and get deep post position, but – you know, he's pretty good in handoff situations. He's pretty good in the long post as well. Uh, you know, he's, he's – And he plays hard, Chris. Like, he – while we've criticized Carolina for the last two years, for the for parts of the last two years, for some of their guys not playing hard, Baycott usually brings it. I, I agree. You know, I think that – I think Carolina, if they can fix this problem that I think they've had, whether they're winning or losing, is not to just play in spurts. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, again, that's the challenge for any coach is to try to keep your team consistent throughout the 40 minutes to try to keep them consistent throughout the season. But with Carolina, it's just so telling because they're so talented, in my opinion. They're not deep. Right. But when you have a guy like Leafy Black, who seems like he's been there for a long time, Shoot. the backcourt that we talked about. Uh, I know Nance is different than Manic, but he's a he's a good player. And I think Baycott's, you know, uh, up there as being a first-team All-American type guy. And so, Black's the difference maker tonight defensively, especially. He really frustrated Hunter Dickens. And look, Hunter was an effective. He was three for nine from the field uh, in this game. What impressed me about UNC was in ball screen situations when Hunter Dickinson was guarding Pete Nance, they started drawing him away from the basket. And as a result, UNC was able to attack and they had a lot of open looks because Dickinson wasn't there to be a shot blocker. So to me, they're making better decisions and that chemistry is flowing more offensively. And coach, thought, how much of that takes time and how much of it is like finally? Well, I think that when you go to the national championship game and you basically get, bring everybody back, no disrespect to Manic. Um, you know, I, I think that there are so many expectations, but, you know, you, you still have to to work that out in the preseason. You still have to have, uh, you know, game-like experiences and learn from them. I mean, you're not just going to start off with the NCAA tournament your first game. You know, you know, you have to build, you know, yourself throughout the season. But I think Carolina really exposed that with Michigan, in my opinion. 
you know, Hunter Dickinson kept getting stretched way out on the floor in ball screen situations. I think he did a terrific job hedging the ball screen, but it takes him a long time to then change directions and get back. And they got caught a couple times um, where they lazily switched. Uh, they tried to switch when the guy that he was guarding had the basketball. Uh, it, it just, I think it really hurt him. And I think Carolina just, you know, the last thing I'd add, I thought they almost started to shoot themselves in the foot when they started to double Dickinson. And I yep. know he's a, a great player, but I, I think that that sort of falls into what he does best. And that's find the open man and cut it to, yeah. to, to a three points when Joey Baker hit the three. And that was after um, Doug had missed the, the, the one earlier. So um, to me, Baycott could have handled him one-on-one. If they started to get hurt or he got in foul trouble, they could have gone to a double, but uh, and nevertheless, terrific victory for, for Carolina after uh, Goodman had him in the NIT two weeks ago. And now he's got him on the shelf behind him. I mean, from road to toast. Bandwagon guy. Bandwagon guy. guy. Listen, a uh, couple good wins. It, you know, it can change quickly. Um, you guys both know this uh, from coaching and, and playing. Everything can change really quick. You can go from completely off the grid and momentum is everything, right? And feeling good about yourself and playing together. It, it, it can change quick. Carolina saw that last year from March 5th on. And I think they, they're they capable of flipping it. I just wanted to see them have that emotion and look like they were playing together. And I think, again, you might look at that play, that Pete Nance shot at, at you know, the end of the year. And if this team... I don't, I don't know if they're going to do what they did again last year, but even if they can make a, a, a sweet 16 this year, you know, and, and fight for an ACC regular season title, that's a hell of a year. In this day and age of college basketball, where, and we're going to talk about this soon, you know, Virginia Tech losing to Boston College at Boston College, you know, Iowa losing um, tonight, setting, making history. Like kids these days, it is so much harder because of, to me, all of the things with social media, with NIL, with transferring, people coming at them, right? People, their guys telling them, are right, you not getting enough time? There's a kid who transferred out of Georgia tonight. and He's averaging 20 minutes a game as a freshman, six points a game. He was a top 100 recruit. They just came off their best win of the year. They beat Notre Dame. And he decided to transfer. And it's like, Dude, like stick it out. I mean, unless something happened that I don't know about, which maybe it did, you know, maybe, maybe again, you know, his girlfriend's back home. He wants whatever. But ultimately, like, like there's just so much that, that can be distracting now that it makes it harder for a team like Carolina to, to from start to finish be dominant. There, there certainly are way more distractions. And I, I think, in Carolina's case, you, you you add the distractions on top of the expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know no one wants to hear it, but those guys are 18 to 22 years old. Yep. And, uh, you know, they heard how good they were over the summer. All and, summer. You know, everybody all summer. And everybody's going to, you know, want a little bit different role. I'm not saying guys are selfish, but like it's only natural. You're going to be a sophomore and going to your junior year. You, you know, you want to put a little yeah. bit more points on the board. You want to make a little bit more plays. Uh, so those things have to be uh, experienced and learned from. And, and I think Carolina, like you said, Jeff, really good week for those guys. And Carolina came into the season as the number one ranked team right. preseason wise. Then they drop out of the top 25 coach uh, as a coach. Do you prefer to like not be ranked in this kind of situation, like for those expectations or does it even matter to you? Where well, you I mean, at? I think for, for your program in some terms of recruiting, you know, you always want that recognition, sure. You know? but it's, it's a, it's a two headed monster. You know, you also have your own team that, that, that you're preparing for and, and preparing with and, you know, making sure those guys are grounded. You know, I've never had a team that was number one in the country to start a season. You know, you haven't accomplished anything, you know, it's based mm -hmm. on the season before and who you have coming back. Uh, so I'm sure those are expectations that are tough to manage for a coach, but it beats the alternative, Megan, not, not, not having your team in the rankings. I can tell you that. 